excited this morning. How about you? Amen. Y'all, if you know me, y'all know who I am. I, I, there ain't nothing I'd rather do than preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But for me to give up my pulpit this morning means something. So, especially looking at this crowd here. I mean, who wouldn't want to preach to a crowd that looks as pretty as y'all do? But this man that's here this morning is a good friend of mine. He has been with me through some of my darkest times. He's been right there by my side. And I'm excited to have him preach. He, he told me a while back, he'd come back from Sturgis, he'd been there witnessing. He said, God just started giving me a message I can't wait to share with some of the churches. I said, well, let us be first. I said, we want to hear it. <coughs> so we got together and set a date. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but I want you to welcome Brother Richard Burke this morning. Anything they can grab up, 
they're welcome to it free. And they all come there. But you could tell, even talking to other ministries, it was just a rough year for us. But uh, I, I will say that I did get to bless a lot of people there at the very last day of it when we left. Uh, we left Sturgis. We rode 30 miles. Now, from Sturgis to the next city, Rapid City, is 30 miles. After that, it's about 100 miles before you see anything again. But we stopped. We said, okay, let's eat. And uh, so we went in. We laughed and cut up because, man, we were, we were tired. We, we, we had finished. Went in, sat down, ate a good meal, walked outside the restaurant, and ended up being in the hospital. Uh, so I blessed those people. I blessed my unit because they took my bike and shipped it. I uh, thought they were doing wonderful. They wouldn't let me get back on my bike. Uh, blessed the people on the airplanes. Uh, but we did get to witness to a lot of folks that we wouldn't have normally got to witness to. But it was, uh, it was that tiring. Uh, exhaustion, pneumonia. I, they, they named all kinds of stuff that came upon me right there in about a 10-minute section. Because when I went in, I was a happy boy. I come out and I weren't happy. <laughs> I, I know it's from God. And, and usually when, it, when I say that, I'm not kidding because usually he's, he's already pumped me and said, Richard, you're going the wrong route, buddy. And he teaches me stuff. So this morning, hopefully, hopefully. But let's begin in prayer this morning. Father, in your precious name, in the name of your Son, Father, I come to you this morning, God, and I just ask you that I would be out of the way. God, that Richard would not, not be up here, Lord. I don't want to block anybody's view of the cross this morning. Father, I love you this morning, Lord. And, and I, I, I feel such a, such a pressure this morning, God. Father, I feel your spirit so good. And Father, I thank you, Lord. I just ask you to use, use me this morning, God, to be a voice. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. 
before I go any further, I know this that what I'm going to be preaching this morning is going to be to Christians. So, so I want you to know if you're in here unsaved, unsaved, I, just, I, 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 I want. I want to open up one one verse of scripture, and I don't want to paraphrase it, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna read it. John three sixteen, one of the most important verses there is. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you're unsaved, you have the opportunity this morning. You have the opportunity right now. I, I, I don't want to preach a sermon to, to Christians when there's somebody unsaved in the, in, in the audience. If you're unsaved and you need Jesus Christ, I would invite you down here now. You know, don't wait till the end of service. Don't wait till you feel a tingle or anything else. If you're unsaved, you need Jesus Christ. And you need them now. You need them now. If you if you walked away from Christ, you're not as close as you used to be. The same thing. You can, all you have to do is step forward. Just standing up says enough to Jesus Christ. And I just want to give you that opportunity before I go any further. Is there anyone? Anybody? Hey, brother Jonathan. But Sturgis, 2019, like I said, it was a tough one. It was a tough year. We did a lot of ministry. We prayed for people in places that uh, it just most people don't even go. We prayed for people in situations. Uh, that, that We pulled a night duty. We pulled a day shift. You name it. You get about three hours sleep a night is about it. And I mean, I, no kidding, no exaggeration. That's about it. And that's not sound sleep because you sleep in your clothes because you're on duty 24-7. And, and it can get rough. But we know that before we go. And the battles that we, we I, I, I knew this is what we're going to be facing. Man, I just knew. I prepared. And I started preparing. I said, okay. I talked to my unit because we started in January. We, we actually started in January praying, saying, Lord, if you want me to go, I'm, ready, I'm willing to go. If you don't want me to go, I'm, I'm not ready to go. I'm not going out there just to, to, just because the hellfighters go. If God don't send me, I'm not going. But I knew this year, again, God wanted me to go out there. And and so so I knew, okay, this is physically a killer. Uh, physically and spiritually, it just takes it out of me. So I said, I'm going to prepare this year. Told the unit a couple of months before we went, I said, fellas, Y'all start getting ready. You know how, they, how how tired we get. We get exhausted. When we leave, we get on the motorcycles, on a ride, and we ride about 60, 70 miles and say, hey, stop somewhere. That's as far as we can make it, 60 or 70 miles. But this year I started doing push-ups. I started doing sit-ups. You name it. Man, I was, I, was, I was getting prepared, you know, because that's what you do. I mean, I've watched TV enough. I watched Bruce Lee and Claude Van Damme and, and Rocky, and that's what they do before they go into a fight. They, man, they, they pump it up. So I said, okay, I'm going to pump it up. I, I, but unfortunately, it had a negative effect. And I'm not talking physically, but all this made me start thinking about my past. I started thinking more and more about my fights. I started thinking about when, when I was in martial arts. Some of y'all know I was in martial arts for over 20 years. And I loved to fight. And unfortunately, this was bringing back that that ego again. You know, I'm a man. Nobody can take me. You know, and, and I, I started thinking more and more and more along those sides. Uh, I had the opportunity to get in the ring in, in a lot of karate matches. And I will tell you this, uh, TV is right on that. If you want to win, you better be prepared. You better get in there and you better, you better know the enemy. You better know, you better know who you're fighting and you better be physically able to do it. So, so I knew, I, you know, I had some of it right, I, but my thoughts, 
Well, let me ask you a question, I'm, I'm, and I'm kind of spying you all. Okay, how many of you can remember the last fight you got in? Good old fight. Yeah, okay. Can you remember the last fight you got in where the opponent was equal or possibly even better than you? Okay, because in martial arts, now, now here's the secret of martial arts. We have an instructor. I had an instructor for years that raised a class. Okay, then I became an instructor. But when you're teaching, everybody's taught the same thing. So you go in there and you start fighting, guess what? Everybody's using the same techniques. Those fights go on forever because I throw a roundhouse, he knows exactly what I'm doing. He throws a roundhouse. I throw a hook kick, he throws a hook kick. We're back and forth. Fights can go on for a half hour and nobody really gets hurt. Because you know the blocks, you learned everything that the other opponent's going to do. A real fight, if you get into a real fight, guess what? You're going to get tired. You will, if it's a real fight, now if you're just sitting there saying, come on, that's not a real fight. But if you get into a real battle, a real struggle, a real, I mean, knock it. Spiritual fights, they're very similar. You're going to get tired. If you, if you get into a real spiritual battle, and I've heard some this morning. I've gonna, got a procedure coming up. I've got tests coming up. Those are battles. Those are fights. Those can exhaust you. Those can. So let me ask you a question again. Can you remember the last battle or the last fight you got into where the enemy Seemed like he was an equal opponent. He could take you down, or he was taking you down. Most Christians can say that. I heard testimonies, praise reports. Uh, you go to any church, and you'll start hearing the things. I've got this going on. I've got this going. You got situations going on, and we need to look at it. So again, let's look and see how this ministers to us as Christians this morning, because it, 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 we we need to know this, because. Sturgis is one thing. Okay, we got we, we knew we were going into a battle. We we planned for it, we know it, we, we we're directing ourselves, we concentrate, we focus. This is what to expect in Sturgis. But you know, each one of y'all have battles. In the house, in your family, you got battles. At stores, you go in the store. You've got to battle because Satan is trying to work you. They know you're a Christian. Go ahead and, go ahead and get mad at them one time. And they're going to tell people about it. That's your battle. Trying to, trying to keep that Christian walk when people treat you like dirt. At school, man, 
I'm your buddy today. I'm not your buddy tomorrow. I'm going to talk about you today. I'm going to be befriending you tomorrow and talk about everybody else. That's cool. Okay? Everybody, everybody's, I mean, as long as you're, if you walk up, there's five people talking, and they get quiet and start worrying. Because you know who they were talking about. Okay? And when one of them leaves, then y'all can pick up and start talking about them. You know? But that's the way it is. That's a battle. That's a battle for people. On the job. Here's one of the biggest, biggest battlegrounds, and I can tell you this from going to church to church. One of the biggest battlegrounds I've found is church. Okay? I, I, I visit a lot of churches. Jonathan knows I visit a lot of churches. And I go in there. If I go four or five times and I befriend some of the people, guess what? I know some of the problems that church is having. It's called a battle. It's a battle. It may be that one person having it, but there's battles in every church. So we got to realize we're not, we're not going to find a battle-free zone. There's no gun-free zone when it comes to Satan. Right. He's there. He's, he's going wherever you're going. This morning you think, oh, yes, yeah, all spiritual in here. I promise you, the demon spirits came in here. I heard Jonathan uh, on, on YouTube. He says, every spirit, we're going to right now breathe it out. It's gone in the name of Jesus. I'm saying it this morning, in the name of Jesus, every spirit that would hinder someone receiving this morning, you're out of here in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. But let's, let's look at these people who are involved in a fight. Okay? Like I say, take it, mix it, move it around, change it. Okay? First, we have promoters and we have audience. Now, in the martial arts, we, we, we do a lot of tournaments. So you meet these promoters and you meet... You have like a convention center with, with I, I fought there one time, and you're down down here, and all these people, that's the audience up there. Well, they both got excited. The people who were promoting those fights financially, they got excited about that fight. Man, they, they especially, I mean, if it it was if, if if it lasted good and the people clout, they would get into it. And you'd hear simple words like, kill them, kill them. You know, uh, little mama saying, you know, we hurt him. You know, I mean, people get in to fights, right? Okay? And we say, well, now, what does that got to do with it? Any one of us in church can be a promoter, and any one of us can become the audience. How? Well, I'm going to promote this church because I give my tithes. And, you know, it's tax deductible, too. Let's not forget that. I, I do get a tax. I might need some tax write-off. So, <clears throat> I don't mind promoting the church. But let me tell you something. Don't ask me to get in the ring. Don't ask me to get into one of these battles and struggles that I hear they get into. A lot of people want, they, they love to hear about it. They, they love the testimony when somebody says, I tell you what, I struggled for three years with addiction. They will come hear somebody to tell that testimony how I struggle with addiction. Why? Because they're the audience. They love to hear about it, but they're not going to get in there and do anything. They're not going to get into the ring because they don't want to get in that fight. Why? You're fighting spiritual fights. A lot of people are scared to fight. They're, they're scared of spiritual fights. Whenever, whenever you know, I, I, I hate to use the word audience congregation. But congregations become where we get excited when, when the t teens go on and they go to the mission field. You know, man, that's great. That's wonderful. Oh, I love hearing. Give us your testimony. Well, how about getting involved and help them do this and that? I just, you know, ain't got the time for that. Not going to get in that ring, but I love to hear about it. That's an audience. Sometimes it's congregation. But we have, we have a contender. Well, in fact, Jonathan was saying this morning some things that are going on in this church. Before I go there, uh, he said, if we're going to do this, so we'll pray for this church. The last church, I mean, don't raise your hand, but the last church he said, I want you all to pray. Did you pray? Did you pray? Or that was somebody else's job. Yeah. Sometimes we say, well, I'll pray. And then we don't pray. 
We got to be involved. We got to get in the ring. But then the next person is contender. Everybody know who a, what a contender is in a fight? Contenders get in there, and I mean, man, this is my chance. I, I was a contender many, many, many times. Uh, got my head knocked off sometimes. But I was a contender in karate matches because the guy I was fighting was like, like my, my own instructor. The guy had been in karate. Uh, even though they're standing there toe to toe, doing this face, the champion's going in with confidence. The champion knows, I got this thing. He thinks he's one up on the contender because he has done prepared. He, he's done this many times. If you fought the devil over and over and over again, you you should be starting to become a champion. You know, I've done this. I've been there. I've already done this. But the champion goes in and he says, you know what? I'm physically able. I know I'm prepared physically. Mentally, I know my fight game. I know exactly how I'm going to do this thing. Yep. I'm going in. So he goes in as a winner. Goes in as a winner. He doesn't go in into a, as a possibility of a winner. He's going in as a winner. That's why they're so, when they say, when they describe him losing, if, they, if I lost a fight, they'd say, Richard lost another fight. If a champion loses, they say, oh, what an upset. That's an upset. That's, that's not, that ain't supposed to happen. That's just pure, man, this guy, he's, he's a nobody, and all of a sudden he won. So, so we want to go in, what we want to go into a battle with as a champion. But there is one more person and that's involved in this, and there's a lot of them, a lot of people involved in this. But this person.
people in the church who are sparring partners. They never have a plan to win. All they have a plan is to be in one battle after another battle after another battle after another battle with Satan. We can't allow ourselves to become sparring partners for Satan because every human being that fights with Satan gives him more expertise, not only on everybody else, but on you. If Jonathan says, you know what? I'm going to have to spar with the devil again today. Okay, all he's doing is learning Jonathan's moves where he can just take them down easy. I've asked a lot of preachers this, and, and, I, and Christians, Christians and preachers and teachers, I've asked a lot of people this question. You know, what plan do you have to defeat Satan? Is there a plan to defeat him, or are you going to just continue to fight him? Because there's sometimes where you say enough's enough, and this 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 has got to stop. I, this, no more. I am not going to put up with this anymore. And you've got to say, you know what? No more of my sparring, sparring partner. I'm going to teach you a few things. You know, I'm coming in as a champion in this one. For instance, if you you got a sickness, you know, like, like cancer or whatever, okay? For years, you're going to have, you walk through the valley of what if, you know, you get a little mole and it looks different. Like, uh oh, is that it coming back? Oh, is this coming? Oh, wait. My throat's sore this morning. That valley of what ifs. You, you're in a battle. You're in a mental battle. You're in a mental battle. And you know when he hits the worst? When you're successful. When your ministry is going to strong, like this church right here, somebody said it this morning. Beware. Things are going good here, folks. I can see it. I mean, I'm looking at the number of children. I'm looking at the number of baptisms. I'm looking at people getting saved. You better be prepared. You better start getting prepared for a battle. And not just to spar with Satan, but to expel him. To get him out of here and say, no, not this church. You find some other place that you're going to attack. Not this church. We are not your sparring partner, and we're not going to train you for another church. We're training you for right here to show you what a loser feels like. Because we know that Here I come. Right hook, left hook, roundhouse kick, back kick, bam, and you're down. And then one person is back and another person. But when Jonathan needs prayer, the church needs to rally around him. Okay? When, when, when his wife needs it. Anybody in here, he said it this morning, you got a church that backs you. That backs you. We can't depend on people in the world to come to our rescue. We shouldn't be even telling them our problems. 
They, they can't do anything but give you wrong advice. But we have to work and depend on each other. I, that, that, that power of mutual prayer. But here's the biggest thing, and, and God, God showed me, because as I was training, doing my push-ups and my sit-ups, He showed me the one preparation that I wasn't doing for Sturgis. And that started right here. Humbling myself and getting on my knees saying, Lord, I can't do it. I can't do this. I need, I need you to go forward first. You're going to have to do this because I'm Richard and I'm so full of flaws. This church is going to have to do the same thing. You got to be on your knees around these altars. You got to be on your knees at home, knees with each other, praying with each other. This isn't something you can do just one time. Because how many times does Satan attack? Not just one time. He's not going to come to this church one time. He's going to come at it again and again and again. And if you're waiting, if you're waiting for the fight, if you say, you know what? Once he starts, he picked on the wrong church. But if he starts with this church, he doesn't mess, he doesn't mess with his side. We got this thing. But you ain't prepared for it. You got to prepare before the fight. Anybody that goes into a knockout fight and says, have you trained any? Nah. I learned it about five years ago. I know how to do that. I don't need to. I'm not scared of anybody. Let me tell you something. It's been a few years since I did, did uh, pull a knockout fight. I don't want to do one right now. I get hurt. And that's the way the church is. We take it and we start getting satisfied. We sit and we say, we can take this. We, we, we got this. Relax, folks. We don't need to pray as hard as we pray. We don't need to work as hard as we work. I don't have to do this. I don't have to get in the ring. This morning, I need to get in the ring. But be prepared. Be prepared for the prayer. The prayer. The prayer. The more prayer. And prayer. Any opportunity you have to come to this altar, when the pastor offers, opens that altar up, come down here. Because you don't want to be a promoter. You don't want to be part of the audience. You don't want to be a contender. You go in as a champion. You definitely don't want to be Satan's sparring partner. This morning, let's pray. Father, this morning, Lord, we just thank you. God, I praise you so much, Lord. Lord, I thank you so much, Lord. God, I just look around at this lovely church, all that's going on. And I know the enemy is looking at it too. He's done spite it. He's got he's done draw the bull's eye on it. Father, we come against every spirit, every spirit that would try to hinder, that would try to destroy God's work. And this is God's work. This isn't this isn't any group of individuals here in this church or any individual. This is God's work going on here. So, Father, we ask you to continue to bless.
It's about submitting to God. It's about getting in prayer like Richard talked about. Getting the He wants you to think, well, I'll do it next time. I got later. I'll do it later. I'll, I'll, maybe next Sunday. Today is the day of salvation. Jesus is waiting on you today. Don't fall into Satan's snare. Come forward. Come forward. Give your life to Jesus. If you've never surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ, come forward this morning. Come up here and let us pray with you. Don't worry about what anybody's going to think. Don't worry about the people around you. Because I'm telling you, if you've never surrendered to Jesus, there's people around you that just, they want to rejoice with you this morning. They want to love on you. They want to pray for you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you've never surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ, I invite you to come forward this morning. I invite you to surrender to Jesus. 